Hello everyone and welcome back to The Lone Podcast. I'm your host, Big Swiss. Today's guest records himself pooping and shares it with the world. Um, now unfortunately we weren't able to get Eat That Pussy 445, but our guest today is pretty great in his own right. So let's get to it. So are you, are we, are we doing this? I think we're doing something. Okay. Um, so what would you say is the essence of a YouTube poop? Well, uh, some people might assume that YouTube poop refers to uh, poop videos on YouTube, but that is not the case. It is not in a literal sense, but more in a metaphorical sense where the videos themselves, um, they're people assume they're poop in this metaphorical sense but they are not in a sense uh physical poop that you would put in a toilet but ytp is a remixing culture where people put together pre-existing source material and then edit it with a movie editing software such as sony vegas or adobe premiere or after effects or so be it Sometimes people used to use things like Movie Maker, Windows Movie Maker, and iMovie back in the days, but most people don't prefer those because they're not fun and good and they crash all the time and they make you want to smash your head into your computer until it dies and perhaps until the person dies too because they can't stand their editing software crashing any longer. Gotcha. Okay. Um, by the way... I forgot to introduce you, so this is Awesome Guy 117, also known as the 117th Awesome Guy, um, or AG, mm-hmm. as you said you like to be called. Um, yeah, Awesome Guy 117, AG, GA, 711, Guy Awesome, anything, all that works for me. All right, cool. Um, so why poop? Why, why, uh... Yeah, why is it called a poop? It's called poop because the videos um, are are just uh, inherently stupid, and okay. they remind people of poop. Um, some people might, in a more uh, um, vulgar sensibilities, prefer it as you know YouTube shit, but. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on the maker themselves whether or not they make something that's actually poop or good poop. It's all incredibly subjective and uh, up to debate. And there's always people debating on whether what's the best poop or the worst poop. Right. Yeah, I find any kind of art form, subjectivity is always going to play a role somehow. Um, There's never objectively something that's superior, which is why I have... A problem when a celebrity of whatever um, medium through which they communicate rises above others and somehow becomes the unanimous king or queen of some art form. It doesn't quite make sense to me how someone can be unanimous, unanimously good at something that's inherently subjective in its quality. Yeah, like for instance, Nicki Minaj clearly isn't the actual queen of hip hop. You're right, um, yeah. Because, I mean, it's not because it's not because of her background. It's just the fact that she goes out here and she thinks she's the queen by shaking her booty in, a, in the forest. Like, how does that make anybody a queen? What about Cardi B, right? What does she have that Cardi B doesn't have, for example? Cardi B uh, doesn't clout chase like ah. Nicki Minaj. It's the, cl- the clout comes you to see, Cardi yeah. yeah, so it's kind of like how like uh, the fog comes down under the atmosphere, and uh, the sense that you know the clout, it should come down to you naturally, and you shouldn't force it, right. like Nicki Minaj. Gotcha. Okay, that um, brings me to another question, which is: Are um, YouTube poops always? Are, is the goal always comedy with a YouTube poop? Most of the times, uh, YTPs or YT poopies or YT poops or just YouTube poops, like you said, are um, generally people try to make try to make people go do the funny haha when it comes to putting 
uh, material together. Oh yeah. Uh, most of the times, the goal is to make people laugh, and s or sometimes the goal is to make them really mad and type really angrily in the YouTube comments section and say, uh, "I was expecting the real thing. This is just edit unedited garbage that with loud noises and unfunny uh, music and jokes. You should die. This video sucks. Now you n you need to get a life and." Oh yeah, sorry. Um, don't YouTube poops normally say YTP in the title though? Isn't it? Yeah. Not all of them. Uh, believe it or not, back in the early days, people didn't put YTP in the title because they thought the the title YouTube poop was too stupid to put in. I see. Okay. Um. So yeah. So have you ever seen a YouTube poop that wasn't um trying to be funny in some way? I actually have seen a YouTube poop that I wasn't trying to be funny, and in fact, I've made a couple that had more of an atmospheric sensibilities to it instead of the goal of creating something comedic. Okay, can um, walk me through that process, I guess. So the process of it is basically um, I want to have a, a deep pseudo intellectual uh, video idea, right, and then. I go out and I get source material that looks, um, you know, that's moody and dark and uh, I try to, you know, go back and look at pre-existing ideas and I'm just like, yeah, um, let's, just le let's not make it funny because funny is predictable. So I go into the, my movie editing software and import all the source material and I put it all together and I have the goal of not making it funny because fun, because f cause, uh, humor in a YTP is always expected. Right. But if you subvert the viewer's expectations, you'll you'll gain more uh, respect and you'll gain more attention. Right. Uh, therefore, for being different and going out of the way for doing something that isn't humorous. Um, and yeah, um, basically, it's just a bunch of crazy, uh, complicated. Vin it's not always complicated. Sometimes you can put something together that's really easy. It doesn't have to be complicated, but some people choose to be complicated because they like the, you know, they like to put effort into their videos just beca either because they have free time and they have no other useful things to do in their lives or, or the fact that, um, they just, they take it way too seriously and, you know, they think it's like a job to do so. Right. But I would fall into the former category of that where I just have too much free time on my, ha on my hands. Yeah, um, so of the YouTube poops, or I guess of the ones that you've made that weren't comedic, what were your goals with those specifically? You said you used moody source material, so then what did you do um, from there exactly? So basically I put the videos into the, into the editing software and I put it into the video editing timeline and then... I ask myself, well, how am I, how, what, I, what exactly, what kind of imagery do I want to recreate here? Uh, do I want to do something moody where, um, uh, you know, I want to like depict like, um, like say like this really abstract like tunnel or something that represents like a black hole or like uh, something that represents, uh, you know, anxiety or depression. And other like basically trying to capture the imagery of uh, emotions and trying to translate that into um, into uh, visual um, metaphors effects. in a way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in that sort of sense, and it really it just depends. It can it can go either way, in my opinion. And just uh, it's it's really all really subjective, and it's really up to the video editor to decide what what or what not to do when it comes to editing whether it be humorous or otherwise okay yeah it seems like you're taking a message from source material enhancing it visual visually or audibly however you choose or both to drive a certain message home that you feel is worth sharing with people i guess in this case in a sense yes yeah okay um and then also, so even the comedic YouTube poops, at least early on, they seemed a little bit um, trying to break a comedic mold, which is, um, at least in the mainstream, it's hard to find comedy that's nonsensical, for me at least. Um, right. And I find that uh, YTPs fill that niche a bit. Is that Was that maybe the initial goal of them, to 
break away from a logical sense of comedy or I would say that YTPs existed um, at the f at first as a really big inside joke between a couple of friends and then one of those friends shared it onto a video sharing platform and then other people saw it thought it was funny and then they decided and then the concept spread like a wildfire up in the late 2000s and then once around 2007 people started taking to start it was more of a it's it's always it was a hobby sort of thing where people just use their free time to put together their favorite source material and then edit it to their own whim and add their own ideas and spin and parody ideas that would be different from usual things that you would find at the time like your base belonged to us or Nyan Cat or you know lol cats and what have you and all the other old memes of the days that were that people thought were long and tired at the time and so people wanted a people started taking YTP in a direction where it should be different from mainstream humor and instead have this more surreal humorous aspect to it where applying things like um, ear shattering noise or buzzes and visual effects in a way that really hasn't been done before because with the advent of digital video editing people have the uh, opportunity to utilize these um, tools to create things uh, at their own homes without the need of professional uh, knowledge of how to use the software. Um, of course, uh, experience always helps uh, with uh, the way you want to edit things, but generally uh, even a novice has a good idea of what to do in terms of um, wanting, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, a novice has a good idea of what they want to do in terms of putting together something, even though they're not a professional because they have the tools at home and, uh, and like back in the day, back in the nineties and eighties and below, you had to have professional video editing equipment that could record with either film or tape. But now that you have digital files, it's so much easier to gather source material and put it all together right. without having to pay for anything. Yeah. Um, that was actually going to be another one of my questions as I heard you mention, um, well, I know it's called ear rape in some videos and I was wondering how that even became a thing because that's certainly not pleasant, at least not to me to listen to. So was that just another exploration of how the video could be modified to perhaps make something funny that maybe wasn't inherently so to begin with? So the advent of this thing called ear rape, the, the very loud distorted noises that hurt people's ears and either makes somebody laugh or type in angrily in the comment section below. The advent of that basically actually came from the intent to annoy people uh -huh. because back in the early days of YouTube, um, people would go up and search for things like uh, Dragon Ball Z AMV or what, or what have it or like looking for like a trailer for, for a movie. And then a YouTube pooper would put a clickbait title in, like uh, Dragon Ball Z AMV, best quality, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. And then um, the person clicks on the video, and then for like the first 10 or 15 seconds, it's the real video. And yeah. then after that, the person ear rapes it and yeah. just puts all these weird distortions and effects on it to make him mad. So yeah. it's basically like a bait and switch sort of deal. Yeah. It's and just so a prank, right? It, yeah, it's, it was basically like making pranks. Uh, on It's basically prank channels before it was even a thing. Yeah. But um, but not really, though. But it was basically just for people to laugh at people angrily, who angrily type in the comments. But then it became a thing where people started finding humor out of it, and then it just more and more started to become utilized by pretty much everybody who does YTP. And a lot of people find humor in it now. Because you see the memes now, there's a lot of ear raping memes now. And you can credit that to YTP for that happening. Right. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So I had another question that I feel like we've already touched on a bit, and that is, um, are YTPs a way to protest an overly coherent world? in some way and then can a can a ytp ever be coherent so like it, it just seems like it's you're just editing um in such a way to 
break up the flow of the original source material. And what's funny is the lack of sense it's making generally from my experience of watching YTPs. And so I was just wondering if that was blatantly... You, you mentioned it was just kind of an inside joke to begin with among people that kind of grew on its own. But could you ever see someone maybe praising YTPs as a blatant expression of a protest of coherent media? I don't know. Um, well, I would say that 70 to 80 percent of people don't really see the greater, uh, uh, the greater, uh, like, sense of, they don't see, like, the greater, uh, they don't see the big picture in terms of, like, their videos that they make. They just, it's basically the mindset of a YouTube pooper. It's just, I'm just going to put together source material and, like, a couple of hours edit it together in a way I think is funny, upload it online, and hopefully other people will enjoy it. Yeah. Right. And that's basically the common goal. And you don't then after that, you don't think much about it after you release it. But um, but considering the fact that it's been er that YTP has been around for over a decade now, uh, which is it just which is true. In fact, the first YTP was made back in 2004 before YouTube even existed. Wow. OK. So um, but eventually it got the title like in late 2006, early 2007. So they've been around for a very long time, and the, even though some people have said that like the community has died because you know their favorite video makers have like long since retired, that's not true, and the medium has never died. And as long as the internet exists, as long as YouTube exists, and video sharing platform exists, and there's a way to get source material for free, then YouTube poop will never cease to go away. Um, but to answer your question, um, there has been a growing sentiment of people finding more value in YTPs in a sense of uh, rebelling against um, uh, coherent senses of humor and just cohesion in general. Right. Uh, because there's uh, a lot of people find YTPs funny because there's just this, a lot of times there's inherent nonsense right. uh, in the way that people structure their video editing. Because like you might expect a joke to happen, but then the the person who makes a video subverts your expectations and yep. puts something else. Because some YTPs do have a sense of predictability to them, um, and the fact that like because like there are some people who get annoyed by people who use the same jokes in every single video that they make, and mm -hmm. uh, and there's like a bunch of different uh, like uh, like cliches in YTP that people expect nowadays because it's been around for so long, but. Generally, the more you try to subvert the viewer's expectations, whether they're YTP connoisseurs themselves or, you know, just random people on the internet that stumble across your video, you, the, the goal is to try to make something uh, different each time, um, usually, but some people like to rehash the same exact jokes and, and things as before. And you, ha and you literally have some people who use the same exact source with every single video that they release. And there's like no deviation from that sort of thing, and 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 it's like it's completely up to somebody whether they want to use only one source material for all of their videos. I think it really depends, like I said, on just the fact on how people edit the videos together and how differently they can make jokes or create a storyline or do things. It, it it's really all subjective and it's just a matter of taste, really. And there's no real r real right or wrong way to make a video. Unless you you're literally not putting any effects in it at all, um, yeah. And but uh, but to answer your question uh, further, yeah, uh, some people do see YTP more as like a as like a art form, and as a way of expression against uh, common, you know, against uh, more mainstream humor because YTP still is quite unfunny to a lot of people who aren't into internet culture. Um, and so it, I don't think I'll ever break like the mainstream truly, uh, though I have noticed that some that, that that slowly over time that the general populace is preferring more abstract, uh, nonsensical content. Right. Uh, it may not always seem so, but I y you see like uh, ironic memes and stuff like that. You can di you can all accredit that to like YTP because I think I really think they started it before years before like people started thinking it was like cool to do so, but. You're um, the trendsetters. Yeah, pretty much the basically the un the unheralded right. uh, trendsetters that people don't often credit, but it's not like we're searching for credit anyway because we're just doing what we like because it's just a fun little hobby that we do. Right, that's the way to look at it for sure. 
um, you briefly mentioned, though, that um, it, it's odd if even though your um, goal, your goal may have initially been to be nonsensical and break the um, break what break the mold of what is expected by the viewer in, in viewing some content, but your way of doing so can become repetitive, which I find is odd that you can ultimately end up predicting what's supposed to be unpredictable in a way. Um, and that, that's a sign, I guess, that you've become a stale pooper. Um, that's, that's some old moldy poop in the backyard, you know? Yeah, you don't want stale poop, whether in your backyard or in your toilet or on the floor. You never want it ever. Yeah. Just going, ha making stale poop is one of the worst things you could possibly do. Right. Um, it'll smell bad and you'll have people an, uh, slightly annoyed at you. It's not fun. Yep. Um, so, you mentioned um, YouTube Poop started in 2004. So, what was the first um, YTP that you watched? The first, that's a very good question. Um, my first YTP that I can remember was a video called YouTube Poop Mickey Mouse's Wacky Poop House Advan Adventure by Shintantic. And the original upload has long since been deleted because Disney got really mad that the person used Mickey Mouse Clubhouse as uh -oh. a source. And, so, and, and uh, the original pooper is nowhere to be found online, but there are like two or three copies on YouTube that are titled something different. In fact, the, the, vi the, the video, what it's called now is called YouTube Poop Mickey Mouse Finds the Rapist, in which I don't know what's the correlation between that and the original title, but right. uh, that's probably the first YTP I watched, and that was, I think that was... Uh, around like mid 2008 when I first saw that video when I was what eight or nine years old so how did you stumble upon it just on YouTube one day it was in your recommended or on the home feed or whatever I th I honestly think that I searched the word poop into the search bar oh yeah and that's what I got yeah the the first one I saw um, was toys gone wild I believe it was called the toy story um, YouTube. But I think it's pretty popular. That was one of the first ones I watched too, actually. Yeah. The Big Bell, Big Bill Hells or whatever car commercial. Oh yeah, the Big Bill Hells cars. Bad deals, cars that break down. And if you want to find a bargain of Big Bills, you can kiss their ass. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one for sure. Challenge pissing, right? Yeah, so if you can piss six feet straight up without getting wet, you get no down payment. Yep, yep. Um, so, I guess what got you started pooping? So, um, I guess what inspired you to contribute to the library of poop? So, um, uh, bowel movements aside, I first started getting invested into YTP. Uh, the year after I discovered it, around 2009, when I found out that Windows Movie Maker was pre-installed onto my Windows XP PC. And so I was just like, you know what, I want to make ones myself because I really look up to these people who make these really funny, silly, wacky videos with all these sources that I enjoy. And so um, I took it upon myself uh, to put s mash something together around early 2009 mid 2009 and it was a uh, pretty sure it was this video it was a video that came with windows xp and it was like this kid riding on a tricycle and then playing on a playground and it like came with windows xp and so that was my first ytp and it was just a bunch of like weird it was just a bunch of it was the same exact scene of the kid going down the sidewalk on his on his tricycle and it just kept repeating over and over with different effects added to it. And that was literally the whole thing. And it lasted about a minute or so. But I vowed to make something better after that, even though my nine-year-old self didn't you know exactly how to make it like, my, like the people I looked up to at the time. That's pretty impressive that that soon after you had been exposed to the genre that you decided to make your own, I have to say. It is quite fascinating how, like, so, like, uh, that reminds me that a lot of, I, I'm really glad that I didn't actively go out to try to, uh, talk to the YouTube peepers I looked up to, because there was a lot of little kids 
at the time, like at my age, that tried to go out and ask people about what kind of effects and sources or songs that they used, and they would constantly harass them in the comment section, Yikes. asking what they used as sources, and then they would proceed to be either ignored or blocked. So I'm glad I was not one of those kids. Yeah, that sounds pretty dang harsh. Um, yeah, YouTube poopers can be very mean people. That's sad. I wish that wasn't the case. Not all of them, though. Would you would someone. you say that would you say they're poopy? They are very poopy. They are like they're like that one uh, turd in the very back of the backyard that's been neglected. That's just been collecting where all the birds like to send under. You know. Um. Um. So that brings me to the next question, which is. How much can one poop? Um, you could poop uh, 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times. Some people have pooped even like f like upwards to like 500. And that's that's incredible. Like how they even have the time and patience to do that. And it, uh, it blows my mind how people have the capacity to poop over 500 times. Yeah. It, it, it's just it's it's unbe unbelievable i don't even think it should be like humanly possible to even uh excrete that amount of uh Excrement. that amount of uh, uh fecal matter out like that yeah it's just it, it, it blows my mind i mean i eat a lot of beans but i i top out at about five i'd say yeah five i would say i would top out at about say 120 okay or 130 that, that's pretty solid or depending on how late in the day you are, it might be pretty uh, liquefied. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's solid. Sometimes it's a little liquidy. Sometimes it's a little bit in between. But you, uh, it's sometimes it's pretty unpredictable. Yeah. So, um, can someone call you poopsie and still poop a YouTube? Um, sometimes you could YouTube poop. Sometimes you can poop the tube. Sometimes you can poop through the tube, out the tube. Um, uh, 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 diagonally through the tube or sideways through the tube what you have it up down south north west east you know you name it you could poop any such way you want um, through a tube and a and a pipe you know yeah like Mario's pipe he won't he'll, he'll clean like it for you you know yeah exactly yeah it's it's yeah it's it's I would say it works every single way that you would could, uh, possibly imagine yeah. all right um so then, why even fart the yard when you can poop the stoop? Uh, you can also scoop the, the poop. You can uh, skidoo, we can too. Um, you can uh, do the, the nay nay with the shenay nay. Or you can do all sorts of different things. Hit it's, the quan. it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, the quan, the duggy, uh, the stinky laying. Hit that. Or the stinky, that. the stinky poop, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, to top it off, give me that Yahtzee World Class three in a row, pocket rockets, and a new pair of shoes for old Slizbo. I'm talking Chinese chess to the Bugsy Boys out west. There's no stopping the ice cream from drizzing on the quagmire. And that does it for this interview on the Lone Podcast. Thank you for showing up here awesome guy 117 ag it's yeah i guess it's not so lone anymore right you rascal you all righty i think that about does it